Hello and welcome to another edition of Press Row. No Todd today, so we got Zach. Just call me Todd Walker today, guys. Yeah, Todd Bowling Walker. Green Falcons all the way. <laughs> Aaron Matthews, <laughs> Mark Koontz, I'm Matt Finkel. Let's jump right in. Week 13 coming up of the high school football postseason. Three MAC teams still alive, most of any conference in our area. How many come away with the win? Can I just say something before we actually dive in here? <laughs> I'm at a complete disadvantage. This is the way that they treat me on this show. I just found out about these topics not but a minute ago, and so Literally I had 30 seconds time ago, to process these. Just a caveat Good job there. of filibustering, though, to, to <laughs> buy some time I'm for you trying, to think about I'm it, as trying. Aaron and I will respond, and then you can chime in. <laughs> I, I think you look at Marion Local taking on Layman Catholic. That might be the biggest lock of the weekend. I think Marion Local is going to win. I think Coldwater LB perhaps is going to be the best game of the weekend. I think best Coldwater, game involving the MAC teams is the best game period. Best game period. Okay. Hmm. And, and then Minster playing as well. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll say it. Mac's going to sweep. All three hmm. move on to the state semifinals. I have no doubt in my mind. I've got Mac three and zero as well. I like the thought process, Mark, as well. That could be the game um, this of the weekend involving uh, the Northwest District and this region. Um, involving uh, Liberty Benton and Coldwater as well, having seen Coldwater last week. Was very impressed what I saw with them and how they reacted to when guys went out. Yes. And Brody Hoying goes down in the first quarter. Jack Hemelgarn comes in, and he just takes him right down the field and scores. Brody Hoying comes back, his very first play back after being injured. Touchdown. <laughs> they lost a couple other guys, but they were able to come back as well. Coldwater was very resilient in their matchup with Huron. Huron, I think, gave him some looks that maybe they hadn't seen. Uh, you know, on film, but uh, they adjusted well, and uh, I would say, unless proven otherwise, Coldwater and D5 is the team to beat. I think you look at Liberty Benton, the fact that they don't play that many Division 5 teams throughout the regular season because of their conference, there's always going to be that little bit of a question mark of how good Liberty Benton really is. I think this is a good Eagle team. You look at their non-conference games in the regular season, they played uh, Bowling Green, they played them really, you know, Division 3 school. I, I think LB is better than perhaps they've been in the last couple of years, but I, I think Coldwater is just, again, that much better. The depth of the Cavaliers is their strength. I'll tell you what impressed me most about LB's win over Marion Pleasant, and I had friends that were at the game that were texting me, so I was getting updates what was going on. LB had one penalty, hmm. and they, they, you know, and Marion Pleasant, I thought, might be able to knock off Liberty Benton because they were they were trucking people uh, during the regular season and into the postseason, and they were the team that got trucked. They had nine penalties for over 100 yards, and Liberty Benton just one penalty for five yards in the entire night. As we usually do at this time of year, common opponents is a good way to try to figure it out. Interesting that Liberty Benton and Coldwater don't have any common opponents, so we really don't even... And it, that, I think that's what makes it the most intriguing yeah. matchup is uh, two very... Uh, teams that you don't see play each other often, but mm -hmm. are familiar teams being right. so far apart. What is that? Easily 60 miles apart or so, 45 minutes. So interesting. Yeah. And, but being in the same region, the common opponent for Minster and West Liberty Salem is Mechanicsburg, yep. mm -hmm. who West Liberty Salem beat 42 38. And we remember Minster defeated Mechanicsburg in double overtime earlier this postseason. So that's going to be a good game, I think, as well. It will be. I think you look at Minster, you see what Coach Stokes is doing with his team and just year two, and we, as we've talked about on this program before, the cupboard wasn't bare when he took over for Nate Moore, who got the job at Cincinnati LaSalle and is also playing for a regional uh, title this weekend also. And they've got great athletes, they've got good kids in general, and I think that you know they can, they can do things that maybe West Liberty Salem hasn't seen you know, coming into this weekend as well. I, I like Minster's chances, although that could be another very good game too. Yeah, the skill position kids, Minster rolls out on the yes. field. That That's what makes a difference. Uh, certainly with uh, Eli Wolf off to east, uh, west, Eastern Michigan. Eastern. And he not only makes an impact as the tight end receiver, but he also makes almost a bigger impact defensively. All Mac, first team All Mac as a linebacker. It was a major disruptive force defensively against Versailles in their win last week. I, I, I've said all along, I've liked what Minster can do with those skill kids. So with that in mind, what is the biggest surprise this postseason? Hmm. You can take it negative or positive. I, I, I think you got to look at Columbus Grove. Yes. Not, not a lot of people had the Bulldogs making the playoffs, let alone playing for a regional title against Arlington. I, I think they're going to have their work cut off for them against a very good Red Devil team. But Columbus Grove, to make the postseason, win two games in the postseason, I don't know if anybody thought that was going to happen let, a month ago, let alone beginning of the year. Remember they lost four in a row. And after starting 3-0, then they lost yep. four in a row. 
But since then, their defense has really played amazing. They gave up 0, 13, 6, 6, and 7 mm -hmm. in their last five games. Well, and, the, and, that, and that Tiff and Calvert game, those last the points that they gave up, right. Calvert went 99 yards right. in 51 seconds, and they basically played the, the good old-fashioned Ole defense where they held out the red, cur you know, the red curtain was like, come on, come on, come on, Ole. <laughs> That's basically how it was. They let them score. Yep. They played a prevent, you know, drop nine guys back, just let them have at it. What were you going to say, Zach, about Grove? Just th watching them play Pandora Gilboa the second yeah. time early on in the postseason, the confidence was evident. Of course, home game, they were excited about that, weren't expecting to have that home game. But I think you could really see the confidence that they brought out on the field, and they rolled through that game. I'm not going to say a team, but to me, the biggest surprise, and this is not a slap or a diss on anybody, the fact that Lima got multiple uh, playoff games. That was going to be, um, yeah. With, you know, it made sense. For Spencerville Tenora, with the with the amount of fan bases there, and you look at the size of the schools, you look at the size of the communities that encompass those school districts. It made sense to go mm -hmm. there. I was surprised that they got this week as well. And I know from a media perspective, it was crammed like it's sardines tight. last week. It's extremely tight. That to me seemed to be the surprise with they going with a more compact, smaller press box uh, there at the stadium. I mean, the ge geography makes perfect right. sense for Coldwater and Liberty And that's Benton. why Liberty Benton and Coldwater are there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because Lima would be pretty much halfway between the two with the other ideas of wanting to play on the field turf. But with, with that press box, and, and granted, it really only affects the media, so perhaps we're harping on it a little bit more. But it, from what we were told beginning of the playoff season from the OHSAA, it didn't look as if Spartan Stadium would get anything outside of the Lima senior home game. All right, let's move to college. I'm going to be very careful with the way I phrase this question. <laughs> Does Ohio State deserve to be in the college football playoff? Are they going to be the top four team, one of the top four teams? Are you wanting this as of right now, or are you wanting this after December, December 6th? I'd say when the playoff starts. Will they be deserving of a spot? Not will they get it, because that's a totally different story, but will they be deserving? If they run the table, yes. If they exactly. do not run the table, absolutely not. Okay. I yeah. think that there's been... So few true tests thus far. I'd like to say right now I think Ohio State is deserving. At least top five, the top four, I'm, I'm right there on the edge. But if they run the table, they beat a very good Wisconsin team in the championship. I think that's whoa, one whoa, test. Whoa, whoa. You're assuming Wisconsin gets to that championship I say, yeah. game. I am. But because the Big Ten West is very much up for grabs between Wisconsin. They are the leaders. They've got a game up on Iowa, Minnesota, and Nebraska. But they all play each other the next couple of weeks. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost a little bit of a, of a mini tournament in the West sure. just to get to the Big Ten title game. Sure. It's going to be like playing Mike Tyson's punch out. Do you remember that game when you were younger? <laughs> for the Nintendo? Of course. Yeah. You got to go through Glass Joe. You got to go through Soto uh, Pins. All to get yeah. to Tyson. All to get yeah. to Tyson. I mean, what was, I can't remember. There were so many other characters, but those were the two that stuck. Those so Ohio State guys. is Tyson waiting. Yes, okay. potentially. Yeah. But I think when you look at teams just in the whole scope of it, and I'm not saying this because I'm an Ohio State fan, I think the team right now with the most momentum on the outside looking at is Ohio State. Definitely. Look at Mississippi State. How are they going to respond after sure. getting beat this past week by Bama? Bama vaults into the number one spot, which didn't surprise me because everybody thinks the SEC is, you know, just the greatest thing since, well, this table in front of us made of rich mahogany. It's, it's a nice table. It yeah. is pretty nice. Yeah. But, you know, Oregon, Florida State, you cannot discount Florida State. Still being undefeated. They've got a great shot, you know, to still stay in. And I think they will stay in if they do stay undefeated. But if Mississippi State falters, then you could maybe see Ohio State in there as soon as next week. I could see maybe Oregon falling off. It went, what's interesting about this committee is that it's first year, obviously, so we don't, mm -hmm. we're kind of feeling them out. Florida State is three, yet they're undefeated. And I think with the old polls, they would be number one, so mm -hmm. there's a difference there. So it seems like the, loss, the wins and losses, quality of wins and losses clearly matters. When you look at Oregon's loss to Arizona, yeah, Arizona's ranked 15th. But Arizona hasn't beaten anybody in the top five in the power conferences with a winning record, I should say. Right. Meanwhile, Ohio State's loss to Virginia Tech doesn't look very good, but Virginia Tech has four losses within one score. So, like, well, are, you, you you look at with the Ohio State Oregon uh, debate, you look at Ohio State's loss. Virginia Tech, as Matt mentioned, four losses within one score of each other. Well, you've got uh, Oregon; their one loss was to Arizona. They're four, they have four wins within right. one score of each other. So 
kind of the balls fall in the right way for Arizona, which makes Oregon's loss them doesn't look as bad, whereas Virginia Tech's fall in the wrong way, making Ohio State look bad. You know, it, it's difficult for me to say that because I don't see enough of the other college football teams. I, I, I see Ohio State every week. And I'll rely on what Urban Meyer has said. He has continually called this the most improved team he's ever been around from week one to week ten. But when he was asked earlier this week, Point Blake, is this one of the four best teams in the country? He said no. Not yet it was, was his response. And well, let the, the chips fall where they may. Well, and there's a lot of football left to be played. Oh, right? The goodness, question yes. wasn't whether or not uh, they should be right now, but does Oregon do they still have Oregon State? Oregon yes. still they play Oregon State and you next got the week, Ole Miss, uh, and then you've still got State and they've still got the Pac Pac the Pac well, 12 championship right. game. So a lot of football. Yeah, a lot left. It's going to be fun down the stretch. They've got according to the prognosticators from uh, the mothership, 58 um, percent chance of running the table. Oregon has as okay. of last night. What's Ohio State's Gina? Nope, don't recall yeah. seeing that. One. Don't you love questions on? TV? I was too busy. Yeah. I was too busy watching right. tip-off marathon. I bet it's somewhere in the 60s. Or, I think yeah. it, I would say. Where's 65. the question about Kentucky? Why are we not talking yeah. college we'll get basketball? We'll get to basketball. Basketballs later. That's we later got on. tons of basketball. Not, not, this, not this edition of press row. Later in later in the month. But anyway, to the NFL, the Bengals had that tie against Carolina back in October, and the way that division is shaping up, the Browns went from first to last in a week. So that division is like right here. Will that tie? be a factor in helping Cincinnati claim first place. So they went back to normal? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you could say <laughs> the that. The rightful right? yeah. position. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I, you know, I, I, right now, Bengals are essentially a half game up on the Steelers because of the tie. It, it would be something if, if they get that first place because of a tie. Yeah. And that's what I, I think the very well is how, how things could shape out in the AFC North. is It'll come down to the fact that the Bengals have one fewer loss because they got neither a win nor a loss one week. And I'm first time ever, would that be the, the case? or What, the first time that a team with the, a tie, the tie yeah. wins the division? I don't know. We could also see a team that's 6-9-1 and one or 6-10 and 10 win their division this year, too, You're right. in, the, in the NFC South. Yeah, the Falcons in first place wow. right now with uh, that losing record. All right, so it's winter, obviously, based on looking outside. It's <laughs> 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 safe fall, but it's definitely winter. So let's go, let's go over our favorite wintertime activities, where our choices are skiing, sledding, snowmobiling, snowboarding. What do you got? Easy. Sledding. <laughs> sledding? Okay. Sledding. But the best part is, and this is from taking it from – National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Remember when Clark Griswold oiled up the sled and he ends up going into Walmart? I'm telling you, you oil the sled, it works. And also... Just about every winter sport, it's some sort of way of sliding down a hill fastest. I will. All it's always predicated on falling down. If I'm going to fall down, I want to fall the least amount of distance, so I'm going with sledding too. You're closer to the ground, you fall over, it's less hurt. The other Wait thing too that I, that I enjoy is body sledding. No sled, you take <laughs> off going, running, and you just, just first go and see <laughs> how far that you was can an go. Option. Has, first of all, how many people here have snowboarded? That's why snowboarding's my you favorite. You look at me! <laughs> <laughs> you really think so. I'm just asking the question because, you know. Rolly poly up in here. You have to experience all of these things to really make a decision. I think you and I should go snowboarding, and I'll give you a lesson or two on that bunny hill. We'll have you go rolling down the black diamonds in yeah. no time. We're, we're, we're jumping on a plane. We're headed to <laughs> Buffalo right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to Buffalo. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, well come on, man. What's your, your, your yeah, snowboarding. snowboarding? Yeah, snowboarding. I'd go snowboard. Although snowmobiles, if you've had the opportunity, yes. are a blast. Yeah. Yes, uh, they are. They're, you know, not everyone has a chance to do so, but, and it's a little different than the sledding and the uh, snowboarding uh, because it's not, you know, it's mechanical. But right. if, if it's not snowmobiling, I'd say snowboard. All right. So we'll, we'll hit the bunny hill together. It's also the most painful. Yeah. If you, <laughs> yeah you, you do get sore, so plant. make sure you do some leg lifts beforehand. Oh yeah, that. you make sure you always make sure you stretch before any type of outdoor That's activities. <laughs> right. I learned that as well. <laughs> All right. Well, good stuff, guys. Enjoy Week 13 football, and make sure you check back next week for another edition of Press Row.